This episode gave us more information than any of the previous episodes. What's up, YouTubers of the world? Meg Geek Mixer here to give you guys my review on this week's episode of Star Girl. I must apologize that this is late, guys. I've been doing some personal projects that I was able to finally get done, so this is why it's late. But I hope y'all understand, and now that we put that out of the way, let's talk about this episode. Man, guys, lots to unpack here, but I think one of the major things that took me by surprise was Pat telling us the superhero team he was part of before the JSA. But we'll get to him here in a minute. First we must talk about Dragon King and the ISA's plans with wanting with what they're doing in Blue Valley. Now, we've all known all along that they're in Blue Valley for a reason. We just didn't know why. We knew it had something to do with like a satellite or something and that they needed Brainwave's powers and now we understand exactly why they need Brainwave's powers. They want to use his powers to amplify that satellite ray so it can spread around at least six more parts of the state, including their own, so technically seven. But but first, but first they were thinking they needed brainwave, but now that they know Henry can, they plan on using him for it. And one can't help but wonder if they use Henry, if there, is there a chance that he could die by using his powers to that extent of a level? Because we already learned in this episode, just like we already kind of speculated in last week's episode, that all this, that using their telekinesis, their brain powers, both brainwave and brainwave junior, can cause some major anxiety headaches. Because we did see that here at, at the beginning of the episode with Mr. Brainwave himself. Because we got to see him who he was before he became Brainwave as he developed his powers and everything. And it was the, pretty much the same situation as his son is. So no surprise right there. So I'm thinking that maybe this is what might make Henry turn like, let me put it this way. We might think Henry might at first join the ISA or... Or like maybe be a double agent, be actually a part of the JSA and go undercover as an ISA agent to see what they're going to do with the with what they're planning. And when he finds out what it is, let's say if it brings harm to him or his dad, he lets the JSA know so they can stop them. That's my guess on it, at least. But ask for why this thing will be amplified. I'm starting to believe that it works like this. That by using that brainwave's power to amplify their signal from that satellite ray, it'll allow them to control people's mind. Because I think that's what Dragon King said. And I can't help but think that even once they do that, what they, what they were planning to use it for, or at least what Icicle seemingly is planning to use it for, is for the safer, safer place for for his, for his son and what others say safer place for their kids but as we are seeing the isa have a lot of conflicting conf conflicts with each other and i can't help but think that someone like dragon king might want to use it for something even bigger because we learned about his history about how he's wanted everywhere because he used a lot of weapons to kill millions of people before and also we found out that he's taken his daughter prisoner while everyone in the world thinks she's just moved overseas to study somewhere else and here we actually learned that cindy actually killed her own mother i wonder what that is right there i don't know but i bet and it's scary but in any case now that we know all that let's go ahead and go into pat who explained who dr I mean, Dr. Dragon King is, and it turns out that this other team he was with before the JSA was the Seven Soldiers of Victory. And if you guys don't know who they are, if you look back on Justice League Unlimited, the episode called The Patriot Act, that episode was dedicated to them. It pretty much has all the ones who are in who are in the um that episode and this episode. And by that I mean through a photo here. And yeah, it had Shining Knight, Vigilante, Crimson Avenger, the Green Arrow, Speedy, and this one other guy who wasn't in Justice the J JLU episode. I forget what his name was. But either way, to find out that they were part of that team too, and also Sylvester, who was Starman in the JSA, was actually Star Spangled Kid and the and that team, the Seven Soldiers of Victory. 
while, while you had Pat as being who he was, Stripesy. So you got to help but wonder, though. I Could any of us have expected this? Maybe some of us were thinking that the Shining Knight, who is also in that shot, who's also in that photo, was a member of the JSA. But it turns out, no, he was actually part of this group, which makes a whole lot much more better sense if you think about it. Because we all knew that he knew Pat, but we were all thinking that he was probably part of the JSA. Well, were we wrong on that end? But even still, though, what Pat doesn't realize is that one of them is a lot closer than he thinks. Because he mentions to Courtney about how they, about how he's lost touch with them for a long time now. That makes me wonder what the what Earth 2's Green Arrow was like and his psychic Speedy. I hope we get answers to that coming in future seasons, because we do know there's a season two coming. Oh, and also in the fact that Stargirl's not going to be on CW and not DC Universe come season two. That kind of sucks right there, and I don't know how I necessarily feel about that. But we'll just have to wait and see on that end. But with putting that all aside now, we got all. I must talk and be, say how happy I am that Courtney and Pat are finally talk on the same page with something, and that is in the fact that they both think that. That maybe they should try to get Henry to join the JSA, which of course didn't sit well with some members of the team. One of them being the obvious Yolanda. After what hap after what he did and stuff, who can blame her on that end? As a matter of fact, we see even more more of a scene between her and Henry later on in this episode. But I'm gonna get into that here in a minute. Still though, to see how the team is so divided, you got Courtney, Pat, and and Beth thinking that maybe we should invite him in. Rick and Yolanda are like, heck no. That guy's a jerk. After everything he did? Uh-uh. Oh, boy. What? How crazy can things keep on getting? Oh, but they can keep on getting even more crazier. Because not only does this half of the episode deal with Henry learning to develop his powers and, uh, and Courtney trying to confront him and trying to get him to join, but it also deals with the fact of Icicle and his family having dinner with Stargirl's family. And yes, I did say that, Stargirl's family. And uh, I'll get to that here in a minute, but I just wanted to throw that out there real quick. And now let me go into Henry here, who at who found some videotapes that tell about his father's days to how he was learning about his abilities and his telekinesis. And eventually, through all that time, he was learning how to do it himself. But then he came into the dark thing about what it means to have telekinetic powers. As you can only have telepath telepathic powers, but you can read people's mind, and it's here that it shows us how his father came to be such a dark man, because he was reading everyone's thoughts, and how their thoughts have such ugly things going in their mind that he just started hating humanity for it, and how he just wants to, I guess, kill them or something, or somewhere or other. Basically, all I'm saying is it makes us understand why his father is a villain, and eventually, his son's starting to think in that spot, too, as he went to visit his father. Because he started hearing all the ugly thoughts that are going through all these people's minds. And as a matter of fact, Courtney actually came to confront him about it earlier. Now, first of all, I gotta, I gotta say, I don't necessarily blame him for hating all that. And this is why I would rather not be a telepath. Hear, hearing what's going on in other people's minds like that would be nasty. Because one thing's for certain is that we as humanity, we're a complicated species. And the mere fact that sometimes we all can't say we're not guilty of having dirty things going through our minds. But... The one thing we all should acknowledge, in fact, is that some of us, even though we have these 30 thoughts in our mind, at least we don't go through with them. Because if we, because here's the thing, we all have these dirty things going through our minds. But the mere fact that if we can see that and even reject it straight off the bat, that at least shows the goodness in us and stuff. And then there's the fact of what Courtney's saying. How the world's not blacked and white, and through all the pain, anger, and stuff, we're all thinking things in our heads that we rather n that we may say and stuff, but we don't necessarily mean it. Or mi and maybe it's just like a an absent an absent of the mind or something. I don't know which way is the best way to put it. All I just know is that during that entire time, I was like, I understand how you feel on why you're losing faith in humanity, but you also should learn to keep your faith because despite all this bad stuff that goes through our heads, we still can think better and and be better by it. And this is actually true. 
because he kind of now finds this out when Yolanda and him have a secret meeting. First off, let, let me just say, Yolanda and her cat and her wildcat costume, and she went to interrogate him at a hospital. I love the scene where she was on there; lights were all dark and stuff. It was almost like she was bat. She was being trained, had been trained by Batman in that scene, or Catwoman in this case, since Wildcat and stuff makes better sense on that end. But either way, I think him, what's making him really ha starting to have maybe a change of heart was when he read Yolanda's mind. And even though Yolanda had some dark things going through her, she mentioned how she loved him before he betrayed her and stuff. And yeah. And yeah, maybe let's hope that that will change things and he'll probably try to make an approach going forward. Who knows going forward, but we'll see on that end. But now that we put that out of the way, we must go into the family dinner. Wow. When Barbara invited Jordan for family dinner, I was like, I really don't know if I know if this is going to go so well. And if that's not crazy enough... <laughs> Here we found out that while Pat and Courtney are on the same page with Henry, they're not on the same page with Pat finally wanting to tell Barbara everything about the JSA and all this other stuff he didn't tell her about because he wants to, but Courtney doesn't. And it's understandable, but unfortunately at the end of this episode, she found out when she spotted the cosmic staff glowing and stuff. And yeah, so no doubt that when she's going to hear all this, no doubt all sorts of emotions are going to be going through her. You can bet being mad with Courtney and Pat about keeping this a secret is going to be one of them. But when is it not? I mean, I remember back in Miles Morales' Spider-Man when he told his father he just got angry and stuff, and it took him a while, but eventually his dad, Miles' dad came back and just told him everything. So basically it's saying when you find out a secret like that after not knowing it for so long, you can, you can probably say that they'll be mad, maybe leave for a bit and then come back, or they'll just find a way to patch it up. They'll still live together, and they're going to find a way to work things out. But now I haven't said that though, it was during this dinner, it was during this dinner here that first off, I guess we learned that Icicle and, and his uh, parents were from Nuffelheim, I think that's what it was, I only say that because when they were doing a prayer, they mentioned Nuffelheim and I'm like, is that where they were from or something? I don't know, maybe, but even still though, and to fear fact that these parents of his support his idea can't help me think, but what is it that happened to them that makes them want to support what he he's doing? But either way, that's not as important as Courtney finding out that Jordan is icicle thanks to him picking up a hot it pot that just came out of the oven and he's touching it like it's nothing. Oh man. This only can make me wonder about the things that are going to happen going forward. Because let's think about it here. Now she's thinking that maybe Cameron may be a member of the ISA, which is understandable. But from what we're seeing, it doesn't look like he is. It doesn't look like he knows anything about what his father is do doing. But something tells me that when this season ends, maybe he might join the side of the villain. Because I think by the end of this, Cor Courtney as Stargirl will be responsible for, I don't know, Icicle disappearance or his death and he'll find out and he'll blame her for it and he may not know that Courtney is Stargirl but he'll blame Stargirl kind of like Harry blames Spider-Man for his father's issues without knowing that it was Peter there's a possibility on that end and let's say if that does happen one can only wonder what that might lead into going into season two. Oh, possibilities are endless here but for now while Jordan doesn't know about Stargirl being being Courtney and stuff. He does approve of Cameron's affection for her and stuff. Uh, you know that's all about to turn, turn over real quick here soon. Oh, man. One can only wonder what's about to happen here. I just don't know what else to expect. But I will say that this episode definitely gave us a lot more intel than any of the other past episodes, and I loved it. And I can't wait to see what's going to happen going forward. Like, when will Shining Knight make his move again? And when he and Pat will meet again? Because, yeah, Pat, one of your old team members, is a lot closer than you think. And, oh, must I mention that it is a shame that the Seven Soldiers of Victory didn't get as much appreciation as the JSA who came 
came after them. But uh, to each his own. But in any case, guys, I'm going to go ahead and leave it all at that. And hey, if you enjoy my videos, all you got to do is click that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon to be notified when I make more videos. And until then, Mega Geek Mixer, signing out. Bye!